what are our credentials right now? I mean, if, if I'm sure we, everyone watching watched the Man City Arsenal game today. To me, there was no team in there that was particularly spectacular. I think Arsenal prob if you know, I think a draw was the fair result, but if anybody edged it, it was Arsenal. But at that, when you look at that game and you see two teams that were basically unimpressive. And you see all the other teams this weekend drop points. Liverpool drop points or Brighton drop, however you want to think of it. Everybody else drew. Man United barely scraping past Brentford. It takes two goals from um, from McTominay to get the job done. Uh, what is stopping Tottenham fans from sitting there and evaluating and saying, why can't we put ourselves in the conversation? The media. Babe, I'll start with you, mate. Go on. The media. Jamie Carragher hasn't said it yet. So, you know, no, no, no one else wants to say we're in a title race. That's That's the problem with it. We, had, we held the board to title standards when we weren't doing well. Now we are doing well. We're looking for every reason why we ain't going to be in a title change or a title challenge. But, you know, sometimes in, the, in life you have to manifest things and you have to adapt accordingly. And sometimes it can be on the fan base to, you know, hold that standard. Like Ange Postacoglu said, you, you believe it's up to us on the pitch then to follow. And that's all we've got to do. We have to change this mentality at Tottenham Hotspur. Now, it could very well mean we get in a title race and because of the inexperience and the nervousness of everyone, that transcends on the pitch to the players and we end up coming out of it. But at some point, we we have to adapt and believe that we can't do it. We've walked out this year. We've played four of our first six, uh, four of our first six games away from home which our away form was absolutely atrocious last year. We've played three of last year's big six. We've come out unbeaten and we're picking up results where we wouldn't have in years gone by. Now, if other teams done that, it's it's talked about as a title race. When other teams win with 10 men, they talk about title contenders. When other teams, you know, keep going and keep persisting and win games late, like Man United but all them years under Fergie, they talked about title contenders. But because it's Tottenham Hotspur, no one wants to talk about it, and it absolutely fucks me off. That game there today was built up as a title race game, but yet Tottenham were sitting above them, and we didn't get a mention during the game to like 68, 70 minutes. It's an absolute joke. No one takes us seriously, and that's why I think this year is going to be the year where we're going to surprise a lot of people. We've got a good start in 11. We're down to one game a week. We've got the right manager in the moments in years gone by where we had Pochettino. It was his first time ever being there. So there was no one, there was no calm in the situation. And you've seen that in the performances from the players on the pitch. Pasta Coglu's been there. And in them moments, what you need is your leader to show calmness. And Pasta Coglu will bring that to this Tottenham team if we're in the fight come the end of the season. But there is no reason right now, as it stands, why we shouldn't be talked about entering a title race. Because everything that's being stacked up, the manager of the month who do not beating Liverpool at home, not beating United at home, everything that's being stacked up, we've got a tank and we've drove straight fucking through it and the bulldozed it down. So there's no reason why, right now why we're not in a tight race. If people are going to talk about Arsenal being in one, City being in one, well, guess what? We're top of the league unbeaten. So you've got to talk about us being in one. Now, am I going to sit here and say we're going to win the title? Not yet. But... Are we in a title race, which is different? We very well could be. And all I ask is maintain this to January and hand it back over to the board to get the reinforcements in. But uh, look, last year, I would have bit your hand off for this, you know, to be in this position. And I'm enjoying it. But I just think it's absolutely disrespectful with people not talking about Tottenham in the title race. And that should show Tottenham fans what everyone thinks of us. They all laugh at us. They all think we're a laughing stock. Why can't yeah. this be the year where we go out and surprise them? Leicester done it. Why can't we? Love that, Dave. You get me pumped, mate. Goose bin. No, I'm, sick of, pumped, it. I'm mate. sick of Goose the media pumps. because Spurs are so <laughs> underrepresented. All it is is United, Liverpool, all this bullshit. We never get credit. I have, I, I love it, mate. I, I couldn't agree more. The, the obvious rationale for why we're not is because A, it's too early and B, we haven't got the depth. Because George, the I know you. Right. I know you yeah, 100%, mate. George, I know you've got to go in two minutes, so I'll let you have the next take on this, and then I'll let you uh, say goodbye and tell everyone where you can find where people can find you. But are we in a title race? Is it madness to the Tottenham to be talking about it? Do you know what? I, I love Dave's enthusiasm about it, and I, I, I wish I could sit here and have the same um, energy. But un unfortunately, I just... I, I mean, I've seen our teams in, 
positions before. I've seen us be very good at the start of the season. I mean, under Mourinho, I think we was top after 10 or 11 games. Um, so I've seen us be in very good positions and fall off. And I'm not saying that this season is going to happen. I'm just not going to get ahead of myself this time. That's all it is. I feel like right now, the best thing we can do is Tottenham fans. And I, I personally like being the underdog. I I like that yeah, everyone... I, I love that. Right now, everyone, every game that we go into, everyone's going, yep, you're going to drop points this one. You're going to drop points this one. Tottenham are not good. And everyone's thinking that we're rubbish, but we're only getting better and better and better. And the difference this season, I'd say... Uh, the big difference on compared to the other season, especially the Jose Mourinho one, is we're playing sustainable football. We're beating teams by having better performances and we're convincingly winning. So I feel like it's a different mentality and a different feeling around the club. Can we be in the title race? Yeah, we, we could be. But I feel like we can only judge that for... I'm, I can't be a hypocrite. Last season, I told Arsenal fans, you're not in the title race till February or March. And I'll, I'll say the same thing. You're not in the title race till February or March because... What we're, we're eight games in, we could be eight eight games more played, and you look at the, our next eight games, we could be in a very different position. Yeah. I do feel like we've got let a favourable run in. Let a, me a, a like there, in. Go on. I just want to ask you something quickly, right? Last season under Conte, after seven games, we were in the exact same position we were before we bought before we beat Luton, and everyone said we wouldn't sustain it. And look, they end up being correct. Would you not say this time's different this time around, or the feeling 100%. around it is not different? The style of play, everything else, management, everything's a bit different. We're a lot more convincing, though. I do feel like we're a lot more sustainable that time, this time, but I just don't feel like, like, like Sean mentioned, our squad isn't going to be able to sustain for sustain a title challenge for the whole season. Maybe less. The way that I see it right now is I'm taking it one game at a time. I want to make make it to January. Let's see if we can make it to January and avoid an uh, Romero, Madison, or, or mm. Son injury. One of our big players. If we can avoid an injury of one of our big big stars until January, and then in January we have to bolster our team because the Africa mm. Cup of Nations comes. We, we're going to be losing Basuma and Saar for a few weeks. So our midfield's going to be looking a bit thin. There's not that many games that they miss, but still, it's just another thing crucial game. Though, so. yeah, that, that's what I mean. It's going to be another big thing to take into consideration. So mm -hmm. I feel like as Tottenham fans, the best thing we can do is just take it week by week. Try and make sure that we just win, win the game by game. We know we've got one game a week. We've got an advantage over a lot of the teams we're going to be playing, and um, yeah. But top four is the expectation. Title challenge would be nice. That's about it, to be honest. I don't really want to put the pressure on the team. Well, George, if you can't see what Postcoglu is doing, mate, you can have off Danny Emery. <laughs> <laughs> I see it. It's okay. I want to say something on City quickly, Sean. Right? The first seven games, other than Arsenal, was Newcastle, Sheffield United, Fulham, West Ham, Nottingham Forest, and Wolves. And then with today, they played Arsenal. Is Sean there? Are you there, Sean? Okay, it looks like it's just me then. Well, the first seven games, first other than today, they played Newcastle, Sheffield United, Fulham, West Ham, Nottingham Forest, and Wolves. City's next eight games. Oh, sorry, the next seven games are Brighton, United, Bournemouth, Chelsea, Liverpool, Tottenham, and Villa. Could we, could we, Dave, be seeing a City wobble here? Brighton, United, Chelsea, Liverpool, and Spurs. All to play in their next seven. We have got Palace, Wolves, Fulham, Chelsea, and Villa in our next five. Yeah. Well, look, you know, I, I, I read something a while ago that up until that Chelsea game, we had eight games, and although some of them were away, we actually didn't have to travel outside London. I think that'll come back in our favour. But when you're talking about Man City, look, I think inevitably there's going to be a drop off. You know, they let some of their experienced guys, the trusted guys, the guys with the know-how, right, in these title races, they let them go. One thing City have done, now in fairness, they've refreshed it with some, you know, some of the best young players across the world with great potential. But it's going to be a different City this year because they don't have that know-how, that game management, that them players like Gundogan and people like that that they've let go. They don't have them anymore to rely on. So there is an opportunity here for us. If we can maintain this, to sneak in. There's every opportunity. United are in the mud. Arsenal, I'm still not convinced by them, although unbeaten, I'm not convinced by them yet. Um, I'm with Man City, like I said, Henry, on that run in last season, that experience is the reason why they end up winning that league and getting that over the line. They don't have them players to rely on this year. So there's an opportunity. It's it's blown wide open, in my, in, in my opinion. But look, 
You know that the them next few games they're coming up against Brighton. They could very easily be undone by them, yeah. very easily. You know, and they're on a bit of a bad run at the minute. It's and that, that game, does come it? down to the players not having the know-how. Sure, I don't know if you heard what I said before you, you jumped. No, I didn't. Um, My internet collapsed again. Typical. City's well, first seven games were Burnley, Newcastle, Sheffield United, Fulham, West Ham, Forest, Wolves, and then they played at Arsenal, and they've lost two of those first eight games. Their next yeah, seven crazy. are Brighton, Man United, Bournemouth, Chelsea, Liverpool, Spurs, and Villa. And I am going to tell everyone right now that Unai Emery is going to beat Guardiola. Just well, get the, same thing, the, the, the guy who couldn't be uh, a dysfunctional Wolverhampton Wanderers. That's, that's fine, mate. He's like we can say what we want, but he's in Europe and he's going to win a European trophy this year. <laughs> I'll defend. I will die on that hill for that geezer, mate. And he's not even managing. Mate, if you can't football. understand what Unai Emery's doing, you can f off down the. Uh, you can down f off down to the King you. Power, mate. If you can't see what Unai Emery's doing, <laughs> one thing I'll say is right. We have got twelve games between now and January the first, which is when the window window opens, and seven of those twelve games are in December. If we can get through, and I've been banging this drum since the beginning of August, if we can get through them 12 games unscathed with Madison still fully fit, Pesuma, Poro, Van der Venremet, it's a big if. And we get into January. If we hypothetically were to buy another centre-back, a forward and a midfielder of good quality, you are throwing your name in that hat for the for the top three, top four. Like if we if we bring in a number nine that can contribute 10, 15 goals a season, another midfielder that can that can create chances. Like for me, I would I would be looking at Wolves and saying, what do you want for Pedro Neto? That guy is absolute class. Who's created more big chances than anyone else outside of the, of, of the big six clubs? Right, he is unreal. I look at a midfielder that can that, that can create chances because if we get an injury to Madison, I don't see La Celso doing that role as at the level. People could say you could play Kulu there, um, and then I look at if we get an injury to Van der Ven or Romero, like just just put give him Fulham ten million quid. Tosin under a bio's contract expires in the summer. Ten million quid, they they should be biting your hand off. And ten million quid in this day and age, people say, but oh, but he's only got six months left. That could be the difference between us having Tosin Adarabayo next to Romero if Van der Ven gets injured or Davis or Dyer. 